All right, welcome. This video here is going to walk you through how to find the roots from any given polynomial equation that you work with. In this case here, we're going to go back, first of all, to the uh, equations that you're more familiar with, which were in what we call the graphing form. And when you're asked to find roots, you're trying to find values for x that you put in for into the equation and get 0 out for y. Okay, so let's look at this first equation. This equation was like nicely factored and looks all nice because you can actually look at it and see what do you put in for x to make it all equal 0. So 0 in for x here would actually make the equation equal 0. If I put a number in for x in this middle term here, this parentheses here, would be a negative 2. That also would be, have to be a root. And the third one here would have to be a 4 to get that to come out to 0 for the parentheses and then 0 for the entire equation. So again, the numbers we put in for x to make the equation equal 0 for y then would have to be 0, negative 2, and 4. Okay, so that was pretty easy. You had that in the very beginning part of the chapter. But now when you get to a little bit more challenging, this equation is in a format which I would consider standard form. It's already been multiplied out, and now it's in a format where it's not as easy to see the roots. Okay? But you can still simply find them by using some other strategy, and, the, and really the best way to start would be to look at the graph of the equation and then go from there. So when I graph this, it actually does cross it in three places, which is a good thing. Since this is a degree 3, um, all, the degree, all the roots then are represented in the, in, the, in the graph. You can see them as roots or x-intercepts in this case, values that you put in for x to make the equation equal 0 would be at negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2. So simply just by looking at the graph, you can write down all the roots in this case, since they're all represented by looking at the x-intercepts, and you can say you have the answer by doing it that way. So by graphing the equation, that's an easy way to find the roots as well. You could have also graphed this first equation if you really wanted to, and you would have also seen it, seen it cross at the origin, negative 2, and positive 4. So now let's move on and go on to a little more challenging one which is what this, this lesson's focusing on. This is an equation here now where you're asked to find the roots. You still want it, it's in standard form, so that when it is in standard form, you're going to need to use your calculator then to graph it and see where does it cross the uh, x-axis, okay? We are going to learn later on some strategies that you might learn, at least, how to figure out what might be a good possibility of a, of a, of a uh, root based on this last term and whatever's in the front here. But for right now, just to keep it real simple, let's just graph the equation, see where it crosses the x-axis, and hopefully find at least one that we can work with. And in this case here, when you graph it, you get a graph that crosses it at positive 1. So in other words, then our first root we can say is 1, but now what are the other two roots? We're missing two because it's degree 3, so there still should be two more roots somewhere. So to find those other two roots, you're going to have to then figure out some way to find them as complex roots, because since we have this bump right here, that bump lets us know that there are two more complex roots. Okay? So let's make and go a little bit more detail here. So what we're going to have to do next then is look at this equation in a way so that we could then factor out this root here. Now, if I were looking at making the equation like we did on these previous ones, when you had the equation like this at a, pos at a, a root at negative 2, you made a parenthesis at x plus 2, okay? So now, in this case, when we have a root at 1, we know that there has to be a parenthesis in the, in the, in the new factored equation that has x minus 1 in it, and we got to figure out what that piece is that's left over. And if it's x minus 1 in the first parenthesis that you'd factor out, then you'd have to have some kind of quadratic left over as your other factor, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to divide it out with what's called synthetic division. Synthetic division is a way to then factor out that x minus 1 from this polynomial up here and give us whatever's left over when you take it out, okay? So there are other ways you're going to learn. There's a, a way that the book sells it as, which is called polydoku. It's another method. There is another method called long division, which could be a challenge for some, at folk, some folks, but uh, what I find is that synthetic division, for this class at least, is, as the first one to try, is pretty straightforward and easy to use. Okay? So when you do synthetic division, the first thing you have to do is use the root that you do find. You need to at least have one root to work with that you're going to try and hopefully find out if it is the right answer. So when you have one as your root, you're hoping to get one, or you're hoping to get uh, zero out as your output. Okay? So when you have your synthetic division starting, you want to make sure you take out all the coefficients. 1, 3, 1, and negative 5, and write those across. Okay, so the number that you put up in the upper left corner again is the root. Again, when you're writing the synthetic division, you want to make sure you're writing all the coefficients from highest degree to lowest degree. If there is a degree you're ever missing, like the, if this 3x squared was not here, you still need to put a 0 in for that spot. Okay, and then at the end, this last number that you see here is going to be the output. We're hoping that that number will always be 0 because when you have a root, if the input is some number for x, Roots are always where you're going to get 0 out for y, so we're hoping that this last number here is a 0. We also call that the remainder, okay? 
Now, the way to get the whole syntax process started here, you're going to need to take the one, bring it straight down, and every time you write the, a number below this line, you need to multiply it by the number in the box. And then next, um, every time, so when you multiply that number in the box, what I'm, what I'm referring to is the root, then that needs to be multiply, or the answer needs to be written in the next column over. So then, when you do that, the next two numbers that you see in this next column then have to be added together. And when you add those together, you're going to get a 4, like you see here. And then you write the 4 down below the line, multiply by the root value in the box. And then that answer goes in the next column. And you add those together, which is a 5. Multiply the 5 by the number in the box. And then simply add those last two. And again, hopefully at the end, like it did here, it did work out to a 0. So that tells you then that this is going to be the process did work, and what we had left over then is the quadratic that is left over. Because every time you use synthetic division, it's going to lower your polynomial by one degree. Okay, these last set of numbers here. So in other words, this these set of three numbers is the quadratic that's left over. So if you were to write that as a as a uh, quadratic expression, it would be one x squared plus four x plus five. All right. So then now we can look at writing our equation then, because now that I have the root at one, and this is what you have left over. Then your equation can look like this. y equals x minus 1, and then parentheses, x squared plus 4x plus 5, because this is the, what's left over after dividing out the x minus 1. Then the next thing is, then, well, what are the other two roots? we got a root at 1, but to find the other two roots, you're going to have to simply use the quadratic formula to figure out the last two. So when you use this quadratic formula, your answers will come out 1, which is what we already got from the beginning, and the other two then will be negative 2 plus i and negative 2 minus i. All right? And now we successfully found all of the roots to this polynomial. Again, to quickly review again what you have to do, the process is to first of all graph it, see where it does cross the x-axis, take that one place that it did cross, put that value in the box, that's the root, okay? Then you write all the coefficients out from highest degree to lowest degree. Start the process by bringing the first number straight down. Every time you do that, you multiply it by the root value in the box, and then write the answer in the next column over. Each time you do that, you're going to add those two together and start that process over and over until you get to the very end. And hopefully, if, it, if one is the correct root, you will get zero as your output. Okay? And then, let's try one on our own now. Let's see if you can successfully take this one and find all the roots to this graph. Pause the video and see what you can come up with. All right, now that we're back, here, are the, here is the solution of how you go through it. The first thing you need to do is graph the equation. This equation does graph, and it crosses it at 4. And then after that, you're going to realize that 4 then goes in the box here and write all the coefficients values out from highest degree to lowest degree. In this case, they are, again, all represented. 1, 2, negative 14, and negative 40. The 1 then comes straight down. Start the process by multiplying by the number in the box. 4 times 1 is 4. four. Put the number in the next column over. Add those together, which is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Then add those together to get 10. 10 times 4 is 40. And then neg negative 40 and 40 gives you 0. That is a good thing because we were hoping that if 4 is the, is the uh, root, then 0 should be your output. And that is a good thing. So then, therefore, since that did work out to the nice 0 that we had here, then this is going to be your uh, expression then that's left over. Since we started with a cubic, every time you do a, a, a round of synthetic division, it lowers it by 1 degree. So now you do have it down to a quadratic, which then you can use the quadratic formula with. And when you do the quadratic formula with that, then you find the remaining two roots, which are at negative 3 plus i and negative 3 minus i. Hopefully you were successful in doing this problem as well. If you have any more questions, ask your teacher. And hopefully synthetic division and finding all the roots will come easy to you.